Welcome to Super Fast Tortoise. My name is Derek, and today we are going to go through my top 10 Throne of Eldraine cards for Cube. These cards are in no particular order of which I like least to most. I like them all, and I just try to fit them into a category from 10 to 1, one being the best of the best, but I like all these cards just the same. The cards listed in today's video are strictly my own opinions and thoughts. They're based on my own opinions and thoughts, and I am looking at cards that I want for my own cube, and I think they're good for almost every cube. So enjoy this video. I would love to hear if you have different opinions and ideas, and I love to see the diversity in the community. And I think with that, we can learn to be better players. So your opinions and thoughts are welcome in the comment selection, and I would love to read them. Let's do this, and we start right now. Starting at number 10, we have All That Glitters, an enchantment aura that costs one generic, one white, and gives enchanted creature plus one plus one, for each artifact and or enchantment you control. Now for me, the artifact aspect of this card is not important. It's the enchantment part, where you get plus one plus one for each enchantment you control. This card is nuts. There's only a few other cards like this, so this is a very rare card to get. Now the name may be silly, but this card is insane and nicely costed to fit in what already exists. Eidolon of Countless Battles. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each creature you control and plus one plus one for each aura you control. Sage's Reverie. This gives enchanted creature plus one plus one for each aura you control attached to a creature. And Ethereal Armor gives a creature plus one plus one for each enchantment you control. And that's for a strike. Now you can see how each of these three enchantment auras are diverse in what they do but these abilities to give a creature plus one plus one for each enchantment or enchantment aura are very rare and so all that glitters strengthens the synergy that i am personally working on for my cube coming in at number nine brazen borrower a one mana two blue mana costed creature fairy rogue it is a 3-1 flash flying creature that can only block creatures with flying, meaning this fairy is meant to be aggressive. Its petty theft adventure ability is nuts. For a generic and a blue, you return target non-line permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Now, one thing a lot of people I've noticed haven't talked about with this adventure ability is that these adventure abilities actually trigger for spells matter abilities. Also knowing that being able to play one part of a spell, then being able to play the creature as a secondary effect is really solid and really strong. So this card for 5 mana can return a permanent to its owner's hand and give you a creature. At sorcery speed, you have Callous Dismissal that returns a non-land permanent to its owner's hand, then you amass one to get a 1-1 one, one army token. Then you have Disperse at instant speed, which returns a non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Now these two cards side by side should show you the power level of Brazen Borrower. That's why Brazen Borrower is such an amazing card to have both effects separate as they are on one single creature. Coming in at number 8, we have Crystal Slipper. Don't let this shoe fool ya. For a generic and a red, you get an artifact equipment that gives equipped creature plus one plus zero and has haste. For an equip cost of one generic, this card is very solid. It is half of Lightning Greaves, it is half of Swift Food Boots, it is everything you want. Now you don't put this in your color slot of your cube, but you put it in with your red spells, because you know people playing red decks are going to play the spell anyways, but this makes your bigger creatures later game more effective, and I think just right for the cube. Crystal Slipper is an amazing addition to the cube, alongside Lightning Grease and Swift Foot Boots, 
giving you the ability to pull at least one of these out making sure your deck has one of these haste engines in so it makes a stronger connection for your deck building to have that haste engine that you want and so thusly crystal slipper deserves to be here you had to see this coming on this list Probably any list that's a top 10 list for Throne of Eldraine would have Fabled Passage. This number 7 card is rightfully placed to be on any top list. This card is mana fixing and possibly better than some of the cards you have in your cube. This is an advanced version of Evolving Wilds. This is an advanced version of Terramorphic Expanse. It is such an amazing card and I know you'll want to put this in your cube. Not everybody can afford the prices of fetch lands from the Zendikar and Khans block altogether. So getting this for your cube and adding it to your Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse obviously makes a better deck building experience for everyone. And that's why this is number 7. Coming in at number 6, we have Murderous Rider, a 1 generic 2 black creature that's a zombie knight. That has lifelink for 2 3 statted creature. And when Murderous Rider dies, you put it at the bottom of its owner's library, which is pretty solid, pretty fair. But what pushes this creature to the top of being really good is its adventure ability, Swift End. For a generic and 2 black instant adventure, you get to destroy a target creature or planeswalker and you lose 2 life. You know this card's insane. You know this card's great, and you know why it's great. I don't even have to explain it to you, but I will because this card deserves it, and I want us all to be informed. Hero's Downfall, Ruinous Path, Never to Return. Guaranteed, these three cards are in your cube, most likely, and they all do the same effective thing as Swift End. Now, on top of those cards being good, Murderous Rider is a lot like Never to Return just never to return to sorcery and swift in is an instant making it really great and they both have that secondary ability to play that spell that's attached to it or that ability secondly so murderous rider you cast swift in to destroy that creature or planeswalker then you get the cast murderous rider as a creature where never to return you get to destroy target creature or planeswalker and later you get to create a 2-2 token by exiling a card in a graveyard that is insane Runus Path is not as good as these two. You could literally switch Runus Path with Murderous Rider, but honestly, I would put Murderous Rider with all these cards in your cube. Coming in at number 5, the Royal Scions. That's both Will and Rowan as a singularity planeswalker that cost a generic, a blue, and a red for 5 loyalty. Now, I'm just going to let you know now. The one and only reason why I like this card so much is for its first plus one ability. Draw a card and discard a card. Straight out is what pushes that card to number five and high as this list is in no particular order. But this is why I like the card is for that first ability. Now for the aggressive stance of the card, its second plus one ability gives target creature plus two plus zero and gains first strike trample until in a turn and that is a very solid effect it's negative eight ability if you get there and want to use it it's fine it's good for those spells matters drawing style decks and it fits the colors so this card is solid all around and you will definitely want it in your cube and to express my love for the scions themselves with that loot ability as its first plus one having merfolk looter and or thought carrier in your deck to add to your looting abilities will be so much amazing the scions cost more than the looter or the carrier but together the scions add more flavor and more tech to your deck and that's why the scions are number five Coming in at number 4, Wrinkle Master of Pranks. A 2 generic, 2 black, 3-3 three, three flying haste creature with whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, choose any number, assuming 0 to 3. And you get to choose each player discards a card, or each player loses one life and draws a card, or each player sacrifices a creature. 
Now, these abilities are insane. And by the way, the text is formed, I think you can choose two of the abilities, you can choose all three of the abilities, or just one ability, or none of the abilities. This card is insane. And there's only one card I can think of that will replace in my cube. Rankle Master of Pranks, I believe, is a strict upgrade to Mary the Cursed. Uh, when I get the card in hand, I'm going to study my cube again and furthermore see if Mary the Cursed is going to be the best card to take out, which I think of right now. Let me know in the comment selection below what you think would be a good replacement kind of card for Mary if it ain't Rankle. Coming in at number 3, Stone Coil Serpent. A colorless, X-casting, artifact creature snake. It has reach. It has trample. It has protection from multicolored. And those are three super strong abilities, especially for my cube. But for a lot of cubes out there, this card is amazing. What does happen when you cast this creature? Well, when you decide to play X, if X equals 5, Stone Coil Serpent enters the battlefield with 5 plus 1 counters on it. If X equals 4, that's 4 plus 1 counters on it. If X equals 10, that's 10 plus 1 counters on it. But this card itself is amazing. It blocks flyers, it blocks ground creatures, and if you have a lot of multicolored creatures facing you, this is one Stone Cold Monster right here. And my wife likes the fact that it represents Harry Potter. Stone Coil Serpent is definitely going to upgrade Endless One in my cube. Stone Coil Serpent is a strict upgrade, a better version of Endless One. And I believe if you're running Endless One in your cube, you're going to want to upgrade too. Coming in at number 2, Ember Cleave. It's a legendary artifact equipment that costs 4 generic and 2 red. And this card alone fits in several different synergies and strategies for deck building in the cube. It has flash. It costs 1 less to play or 1 less to cast for each attacking creature you control. And when Ember Cleave enters the battlefield, you attach it to target creature you control, avoiding the initial equip cost for the first time. Equipped creature gets plus 1 plus 1 and has double strike and trample. Such amazing abilities. And equip ability is 3 mana, which is still strong to give a creature double strike and plus 1 plus 1 buff with Trample. Amber Cleave combos off with Chandra Flame Collar. Her first ability to put in 2 3 1 red elemental creature tokens with haste makes Ember Cleave cost 4 mana to cast at instant speed, which is ridiculous. Also, if you have Monastery Swift Spear out as haste and prowess, the prowess ability Ember Cleave will give it a plus 1 plus 1 bonus. So that's really solid. And Zellius Conscripts um, helps reduce the amount of costing to Ember Cleave by stealing another creature and attacking with those two creatures. This card is absolutely nuts. And coming in at the number one spot on this list, in no particular order, this card I like the most, but it fits in different ranks. Mirror Maid, one generic, two blue enchantment. You may have Mirror Maid enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. This card is nuts, it's solid. We'll see a lot of play in Commander, but in the cube, it will combo off or give you doubles of certain cards you want more of. As simple as Mirror Maid comes across as a card, and as simple as it really is, it can be a second Worm Coil Engine or a copy of your opponent's Worm Coil Engine. It could be a second copy of Corrupted Conscience or it can be a copy of your opponent's Corrupted Conscience. And Detention Sphere is a great target for removal when you need a second Detention Sphere effect. Mirror Maid is really solid and does everything you want. And there's more to combo off with this. So I think you can understand why this made my number one list of cards. Even though they're not in particular order, I just favor this kind of card. And that is my top 10 list of cards for Cube from Throne of Eldraine. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have different opinions on what you think are the top 10 cards of your own list, feel free to drop it in a comment box down below. I'd love to read it and hear from you. And that is the end. Thank you for watching. And like this video. And subscribe if you liked my content. And hit that bell if you want to be notified when my next video comes out.